Internet loves telling me, uh, Sam Alvey, you haven't won a fight in four years. You are, you've tied BJ Penn for the most fights without a win, and blah, blah, blah. Knocked out, submitted, and beaten on the scorecards. That's the story of Sam Alvey, the UFC fighter who went a record nine straight fights without a win. Yes, that's more than Tony Ferguson and more than BJ Penn. But despite four straight years without a victory, the UFC kept him around far longer than they would any other fighter. We, we've decided that, that we're going to let you fight out your contract. I'm not caught. I get at least one more fight with the UFC. My contract is one more fight. The UFC didn't cut me. Although, what they eventually did, the man known as Smiling Sam Alvey went on to become an undefeated champion in a different sport. So, how did a UFC fighter go nine bouts without a win? And why did the UFC keep him around for so long? Way before his unfortunate UFC run, Sam Alvey was actually a solid regional prospect. With a 19-4 record and a bunch of first round KOs to his name, Alvey made it into the ultimate fighter house where he was actually the first pick on the entire show. But he didn't get too far into the competition outside of a highlight reel knock, some nice words from Dana White, and a strange experience with Julian Lane. My season is, uh, you've probably seen the memes, the let me bang bro. Uh, that, that's the maybe the most famous thing that's ever happened on The Ultimate Fighter and it was my season. Let me bang, man. I don't wanna do that, man. Let me bang, bro. I, I do. Let me bang, bro. I do. I do. Let me bang. I man. do let you bang. Hey. Let me bang again, man. I'll let you bang. Let me bang. I'll let you bang. Let me bang. Let me bang. And that's just what everybody talks about. Let me bang, bro. And he's crying and getting into it. So instead, he lowered his competition, became a regional champion, and was signed to the UFC two years later with almost 30 fights to his name. And on the topic of champions, I recently discovered this incredible game with over 800 unique champions, from lizard-like creatures to elves, orcs, dwarves, and demons, each with an exceptionally cool design. And now this game is giving away some of its strongest champions for a limited time only, so stick around to find out how to unlock them. With an endless amount of content, whether that's in campaign, dungeons, or PvP, now is literally the best time to start playing Raid Shadow Legends, as these champions will give you a huge head start. As a new player, by using my link in the description or the QR code on the screen, you can unlock two epic heroes for free, Mausoleum Mage right away and Erector Drath once you reach level 15. Plus, by entering the new player promo code Monkey King, you'll get the legendary Sun Wukong as well. Seriously, leveling up would have been so much easier if I had these two epic champions and the legendary Sun Wukong you can unlock for free right now. Keep in mind though, the Monkey King promo code is only available for free until November 20th, so act fast before it's gone. Sun Wukong's special abilities to steal enemy buffs, ignore 50% of its target's defenses, and self-revive are absolutely game-changing. So if you want to gain a massive advantage as a new Raid Shadow Legends player, sign up using the link in our description or this QR code and use the promo code Monkey King to unlock the legendary Sun Wukong and get a whole bunch of other bonuses like an epic champion starter pack featuring Mausoleum Mage, plus another starter pack at level 15 with the epic Rector Drath. And if you've previously played Raid on your mobile device but stopped or deleted the game, we have a special separate welcome back link in the description just for you. This link grants returning players a bonus package featuring the champion Tagore. Remember, this bonus for returning players is available exclusively through this separate link and only for mobile devices. Also, I've just created my own clan called Strike Force 24, which you can search for and join. When Sam Alvey joined the premier organization in the sport, things weren't as easy as they had been on the regional scene. He suffered a few losses here and there, but notably went on two really strong winning streaks. After an unsuccessful debut, Alvi picked up three first round knockouts in just seven months and was building a reputation as someone with true one punch KO power. He even became a ranked fighter at middleweight after a four fight win streak. Like most people, I lost my debut, but then I went on a tear. I was knocking people out left and right, getting bonuses, uh, just have, having a real good time. I was, I, I got as highly ranked as, I was either 10 or 11. I think I hit 10 for like an afternoon. It's like, as I got hit 11, the number 10 guy retired. Um, and so I got bumped up to 10 for an afternoon. And so that, that, that part was pretty cool. But from then on out, Sam Alvey would never reach those heights ever again. 
His record became far more mixed and he transformed into kind of a journeyman, top 15 gatekeeper type of fighter. Despite this though, Alvi had the hardcore fanbase on his side because of his unique personality. I smile on my face, I smile on my soul, I love it. I get that microphone, I can just let it all out. Uh, whatever comes to my head, it, it comes out of my mouth. Which most of the time ends up in a good way, sometimes not such a good way. In an era where Conor McGregor's influence had almost everyone trash-talking, fighting at weigh-ins, and calling out everyone under the sun, Sam Alvey was living up to his nickname. He was always smiling, being friendly, and just having a good time everywhere he went. Whether it was shaving a smiley face into the back of his head, having his model wife who only knew about MMA through Alvey in his corner, or spray tanning a sponsor onto his chest, Sam Alvey was a breath of fresh air for fans. No, no sir, I, I'm gonna fight October 8th if it kills me. Oh, come on down! Yeah. I feel like, yeah, she's a star. I mean, yeah, I know you punch a guy, but she's a star. Yeah, I know, right? That's about the... Sorry, I punch people, but she makes it happen. <laughs> and fans just couldn't help but not love Alvy and his family. This is our newest little man. Uh, he, he's four weeks old. Uh, this is little Crosby Alvy. Uh, I fought in South Dakota about four weeks ago, a little more, and five days later, a uh, little man came. So, again, my wife is a trooper. She went to South Dakota nine and a half months pregnant. <laughs> I did. I had all my medical paperwork in my bag. I knew where all the hospitals were. We, we had it down. People were rooting for Alvi so much that it led to this widespread meme amongst the MMA community where fans would claim he was going to make a title run and knock Israel Adesanya out. And while fans knew it was a bit of a lighthearted joke and that Alvi wouldn't go on to fight for a UFC title, no one expected things to go as badly as they did. The streak was winless in your last eight, right? And I, I feel like people were kind of mocking you a little bit and wondering openly why you were still on the roster. After a split decision victory in June 2018, Alvi would stay with the UFC for over four years, but never get his hand raised inside the octagon again. Whether it was a TKO, a submission, or a close split decision, Alvi looked a shadow of his former self, and nine fights went by without victory. But Sam Alvey had shown he could win at the UFC level, so what had changed? Well, it's probably a combination of three major things. One, he was getting a bit older and was slowing down. Alvey was never a super athletic guy, instead he relied on his toughness, grit, and ability to find that one shot to win fights. So when whatever speed and agility he did possess began to fade, his trusted route to victory was gone. Two, a new generation of fighters were coming through with incredible athleticism, perfect game plans, and had been training the complete spectrum of MMA for years. Whereas Alvi came into combat sports later in life. He had no collegiate wrestling career, no childhood jiu-jitsu, and these new fighters on the block were just a little more skillful than him. It hurt if I ever lose, the first thing you should have done what I said. <laughs> I've got five or six losses and every time, why didn't you do what I said? And then finally, he wasn't particularly active in fights. He'd manage his gas tank and search for that one perfect shot, while his opponents would be busy banking rounds in the meantime. Everything I did was to finish the fight as fast as it started. That bell rings, I'm looking, I'm looking to finish it with every strike. I'm not looking for the six punch combo, I'm not looking for the setup to this, I'm looking to end it right up the middle as quickly and as powerfully as I can throw anything. All combined, it led to the longest streak in UFC history without a win. But still, Alvi was upbeat and positive about the whole situation. If you look at tapology, it's, it's ugly. My last four years are ugly on tapology. But I realized that if you watch those fights, there were a lot of fun fights in there. I had a lot of good battles. Some fights I feel I won even though I didn't. Some fights I, I lost and it was still fight of the night kind of performance. I have put on some some good fights that I'm proud of. Um, the people on the internet want to say what they want to say, uh, and that that's fine. He went up a weight class, came back down, fought guys of all different styles, heights, ages, but couldn't get a victory no matter what he tried. And in the midst of his abysmal run, fans, media, and even Sam himself was shocked that he wasn't cut. We, we've decided that that we're gonna let you fight out your contract. I'm not caught. I get at least one more fight with the UFC. My contract is one more fight. The UFC didn't cut me. Um, he didn't sell tickets, was only getting older, and wasn't going to have a career resurgence anytime soon. Anyone else would have been gone after the first three or four losses. So why did the UFC keep Sam Alvey around for so long? 
Well, simply put, the UFC brass just really liked him. This is a sport where nobody is happy. Nobody, nobody's ever happy in this sport except for that moment they win. And you and your family and your team have been a highlight, um, have been a true blessing. They, they didn't say blessing, but it was a, it was implied. You, you guys have been enjoyed by everyone that works for the UFC. Um, you, every time you're anywhere, anytime we've had anything to do with you, uh, you say yes to every fight. Uh, you go out, you fight your heart off. You've taken some fights on short notice that you probably shouldn't have, but you are always game. You've never said no. And then you show up and you're happy to be there. You treat everyone well. So he's one of those guys that is so tough and so durable and always fights his ass off and shows up and will take on anybody, anywhere. We just, we love guys like that. We love guys that, that actually show up to fight. Alvy was always super friendly behind the scenes, fought numerous times on short notice to save the UFC's backside and had split decisions that the UFC believed he won. When they decided not to cut me, when they decided to let me fight out my contract, they told me, said, Sam, you are one of the easiest people to work to work with. Wow. Said, you don't, you've never said no to a fight. You have gone, I mean, out of your way to help the UFC in, in some tough, tough, tough situations where other opponents fell out and you stepped up. Uh, and he said, it's very easy for fighters on fight week or fighters to show up to the PI and just be mad. So that's never been the case. Every fight week, every time there was a fight, every time we had to deal with you, you helped. I mean, you brought the morale up with the staff. And so we appreciate that. We appreciate that. Uh, and they even said, he said, and we think you won a couple of the fights that you haven't. Um, so he said, all of that combined, we're, we're going to let you fight out your contract. In short, he was just a company man. If the UFC gave him a date and an opponent, he'd say yes, no questions asked. I was one of the old school fighters where I never... I never said no to a fight. I had some easy fights. I had a lot of hard fights. It was never, it was never in, I'm trying to think how to say it. It was never in me to say no to a fight. So I took some fights I should not have, I should not have taken. Didn't matter if it was against an old legend, an undefeated prospect or anything in between, Sam Alvey was down. I was very ready for Ian Heinish and then Ian Heinish backed out about five weeks ago. And then I was very ready for Phil Hawes and then he backed out last Monday. And then I, you know what, I was ready for Brendan Allen as, as a guy could be. Um, so I, I, I he, he hit me harder than I hit him. But what truly put Alvy in the UFC good books was just how kind of a person he was to work with and just how grateful he was to be a UFC fighter. His wife would handwrite Christmas cards to UFC employees and put a little Starbucks voucher in each one. They gave their son the middle name Dana, and on their Tennessee-based farm of 50-plus animals have chickens named for each of the letters in the UFC. So as both a kindness and the fact that the UFC needs company guys around like Alvy, the UFC kept him around until enough was enough. But surprisingly, that's not where Sam Alvey's story ends. Instead of retiring like the MMA world presumed, the pinnacle of Alvy's career was actually yet to come. But I've signed with Karate Combat, and I'm fighting September 16th. <gasps> After leaving the UFC, his home for almost 10 years, Alvy went and got a victory on the regional scene to finally end the losing streak. But following that, Alvy went to Karate Combat alongside the likes of Raymond Daniels, Anthony Pettis, and Benson Henderson. And now, Alvy is undefeated in four fights, has picked up a couple knockouts, and is their undisputed heavyweight champion. Las Vegas! So while he may be the worst UFC fighter of all time on paper, he's definitely the most loved by the people he interacted with, and now he's an undefeated champion. And while Dana White loved Sam Alvey, someone he didn't like was Francis Ngannou. Check out our video on how Francis Ngannou has actually doomed the PFL by signing with them here.